Now you know what they say, man. Every brother ain't your brother. Just because y'all in the same organization and y'all stand and rep the same thing doesn't mean you always going to spare your own kind. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around a bunch of lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't want to pay rent? Got me bent. Got lax on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing. Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you, you gon' leave airlifted. Everybody, you already know, man, k for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, and also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. I want to tell everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be speaking on a situation that I seen take place while I was locked up down here in the state of Florida. You know, when it comes to these organizations and all these different gangs and different cliques of people that stand together, that does not mean that there is never a hand-on-hand -hand combat or a physical altercation between two of the same gang, okay? And I'm not talking about like when it comes to the blood, you got the east side against the west side and stuff like that, or different, you know, sets fight amongst each other. They can all be bloods or they can all be crips or be GDs, but they be different sets inside that gang. You feel me? And they go against each other and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. For this video here, I'm gonna be talking about a Latin king stomped another Latin king, okay? And you know, at the end of the day, every brother ain't your brother. Even if they're on your team all the time and you know, like I said, y'all stand you know, for the same shit, y'all rock out when it comes to war, y'all are just fully in that shit together. Doesn't mean that they always like you. It doesn't mean that they ain't envying you. You know, they low key be hating on you, whatever it may be, all right? For this situation though, you know, it was kind of like a junkie situation, all right? And what happened on this particular day was everybody was chilling in the dorm. You know, everybody's doing a lot of walking around. You know, I think a football game was on, so people were coming in and out of the day room from watching the game. One of my homeboys that was affiliated, he's a Latin king, which I actually spoke to just recently before I decided to make this video about this situation. But, uh, you know, he's a king or whatever. You know, he was, he was the plug, you feel me? He was known to always have whatever you need, from cigarettes, tunchy, dope, phones, no matter what it was, okay? So, at this particular time, you know, he felt like, you know, his shit was coming up short, you know? He felt like he would place things somewhere, and, you know, slowly but surely, it would come up missing, you know? And he's like, I know ain't nobody stupid enough to steal from me, frog. I know ain't nobody dumb enough to be taking my shit when I ain't looking, bro. I said, yeah, I feel you, you feel me? Because he put heart... You know, he puts, uh, he put fear in these people's hearts. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, it was time to bait them up. It was time to, you know, see who does what. You feel me? And he actually had a, a, a couple signs to where he thought his brother was stealing from him. You know, so he was like, I'm going to bait him up, bro. I said, yeah. He's like, yeah. So what he did is my dog ended up putting a couple sacks of Tunchi. For those that don't know what that is, that's K2 synthetic marijuana is what they call it. But it is nothing like marijuana, you feel me? But they, he decided to put that shit right up under his flap and his, on his bed. For those that don't know what a flap is, I'll tell you what that is. That's when your blanket's laid down on top of your bed. And on the head end where you put your head, you pull the blanket back and you fold it. So it, so it leaves like a six inch flap, you feel me? You fold it a couple times to where you see the sheet. You feel me? So the blanket only covers, I'd say, 85% of the whole mat. And then you got like where the sheet sticks out because you unfolded the comforter back. And then since you folded it back after you put the second sheet on, it's going to show the blanket, the six inch flap, which is like a rectangle shape like that. But that's going to be the sheet that is under the blanket. And then you'll see the, the regular fit sheet. See what I'm saying? So... People, you know, he, 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 he stuck some dope right there purposely under the flat, which the flat, everybody knows about that. When they come around and do inspection, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's. Some places you go to, they actually have a marker, you know, or a paint line on your bunk to where your flap should be. It'll be like two lines, just like this on your bunk. That means that's exactly where your flaps got to be made at when they're doing cell inspection and they want to check your shit. You feel me? So he put a couple, you know, Sacks of Tunchi right there, and he walked off, you know, but really he baited him up, you know, another king that was, you know, his brother. 
Everybody sits back from a distance, you know. Well, everybody that knew what was going on. My dog didn't tell none of his brothers at the time. Only a selective few knew. But everybody sits back that did know and observes and sees him walk up, grab it from under the flap, and slide it right in his boot. You feel me? So then that's when my dog was like, okay, boom, we got him. This is who's been stealing from me. It's one of my own kind. Okay? So at first, you know, me and a couple other people, we thought, you know, he was finna just go up to him and confront him. Like, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? Ba-ba-ba-ba, you got me fucked up. You know, what's wrong with you, manito? What's up? Ba-ba-ba, you know, talk to him how they usually talk. Well, he did confront him like that. But my dog walked up to him and was like, hey, what's up, bro? Uh, Let me get that shit up out your boot. So he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, Manito, I know you just took my shit. Da, 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 da. He starts talking to him and he's telling him, like, bro, I know you just put my shit in. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, this and that. And he was like, you know, pulling a junkie stunt. He was he was denying what was really going on, that he didn't take it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And really, it was all plot. So, you know, we already got the facts. We already seen everything go down. So, my dog ends up telling him, man, let me get my shit. So, then he goes in his boot. He takes it off of him. He shows this. Da, da, da. He starts snapping on him. The, the dude says he don't know how it got in his boob. You know, he starts copping deuces. So my dog gets mad and he tells him, tighten me up. He got so mad and angry that one of his own brothers stole from him. That he literally just popped. He booted up, got mad as hell, told his brother, bitch, you got me messed up. You finna agree, you finna try. You, you, you trying me, bro, you trying a family. And he, he was like, man, bitch, I don't even want to talk no more. So you tighten me up or I'm going to punch you in your shit. The other dude was refusing to fight him, was refusing to fight him. But then he started selling out a little bit at the same time. So my dog got mad, punched him in his shit. The little brawl broke out, right? The little brawl broke out. After the brawl broke out, my dog painted him and shit like that. My dog started getting even more mad that he didn't want to fight him. You feel me? So he's thinking like, man, not only did one of my own kind, not only did someone steal from me, it was my own kind that stole from me, my own brother. You feel me? My own nation. And he's scared to fight me. He won't fight. He won't stand up for himself. You know, so that right there got my dog real mad to where even after everyone pulled him off of the dude, even when everyone pulled him off of the dude, he, he you know, he went over there, sat in the cut in between the two bunks, and he was all, you know, like, you know, he was trying to calm down and shit like that, but he was still pissed. Because at the end of the day, when people see this shit go down, you got to hold that person accountable. Especially if there's other gangs, other organizations, you know what I'm saying? People who don't gangbang might think your gang's a joke now. You know, you let your own kind rob you. You let your own kind try you. But then you got other people looking at the other guy like, oh, that king ain't going to fight. That king ain't living like that. You know, he must be scared. It shows they look weak. He looks like he's a, a weak one out of the bunch. You feel me? And it reflects on the organization. So as my dog's sitting there pissed off, mad as hell, next thing you know, he jumps up and he's like, man, fuck that. His brothers were telling him, you know, you're not allowed to fight him. You're not allowed, you know, stuff like that. My dog said the hell with that shit. He ran up, went up to him, split him two more times. When he split him these two times, he fell in between the two bunks. My dog ran up, grabbed the top of the, the top bunk and started stomping him. Just started stomping him, dead in his shit. You see his head hitting the wall, like in between the wall and the, the where the locker was, the wall and like the bunk area. There's like a locker in between the two bunks. You just see his head hitting that shit like this as my dog's stomping his ass. Next thing you know, boom, my dog gets caught. The police all rush in. They take him to confinement, all right? While they take him to confinement, the other dude gets brought to the infirmary, gets put in a coma, doesn't wake up. He's stuck in a coma to where my dog was in confinement, and we don't know if he's going to get hit with a body, you know, a new charge. We don't know what's going to happen. You feel me? And by it going down and seeing how it all played out, it didn't look like it was that severe damage, you know, even though there was blood and shit, but it, it didn't look like there was something to put you in a coma, comatose you over, you know what I'm saying? So... We were thinking like it was nothing, you know, shit, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We didn't even know he was going to get put in the coma. We thought he was just knocked out. But sure enough, he got put in the infirmary. Boom. He was in a coma for like 10 days. I'd say maybe 12 days, you know. And my dog was in confinement. I ended up getting caught with a cell phone and a knife probably like five to six days later. And I ran into him in the box. Got put in the cell right next to my dog. And we used to chop it up, talk on the van, everything like that. And I was like, damn, you think he's going to wake up? 
He's like, man, I don't give a fuck for all if he wakes up or not, bro. He tried me. He tried me. And then through it all, even though he did that, he had the right, you know, he stood up. You know, he beat his brother's ass, you know, because he stole from him and all that stuff like that. All the other kings on the pound were mad at my dog over the situation. And that's what made it a messed up situation. You feel me? Because it's like they didn't want him to do nothing. And he did it anyways. He was willing to rock that violation, you know, because at the end of the day, he don't want to let no one play with him. You feel me? He's like, man, it is what it is. If they want to, they ain't finna be able to remove my crown, but if they want to give me a V or whatever, bitch, I'm doing it. I don't care what none of them say. I'm doing that shit. Because at the end of the day, in his eyes, it looked like they were defending that one brother, you know? And then my dog had so much, he made sure all of his brothers were straight. He had enough to give away like it was no, no nothing. He made sure everyone in his organization had food. He made sure everyone in his organization, if they liked to smoke, they had shit to smoke. If they liked to hustle, they got things to hustle and push off and to sell and to serve people. So at the end of the day, you know, he felt real, real, real tried, you know? Because when you join a gang, you know, that's supposed to be your family. You see? So, while we're back there, right before they shipped my dog, we found out the dude woke up. But, when the when the dude woke up, he ended up sending a kite to someone else. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, tell his side of the story, I guess. You feel me? That's how you could say it, you know? And so, he sent the kite to another king. And the other the kite that he sent to the other king, they sent it to my dog in the room next door. He sent it to me and said, For all, I want you to read this. Tell me what you think. I read it and shit like that. And he told a totally different story than what really happened. Because now they were on his trail about him being scared to fight. So now he was wants to tell them what really happened. But it was a fake thing to make my dog look even worse. Made it look like my dog was accusing of him of stealing. But he really didn't steal. And my dog jumped the gun and put his hands on him and did shit that he shouldn't have did. That was not tolerated inside of their chapter. You see what I'm saying? But that ain't what happened, you know what I'm saying? So through it all, all the other kings on the compound, they didn't like my dog no more over there because he put his hands on one of his own kind. I felt like my dog was 100% right and legit and I felt like he did what was needed to be done because not only did you catch him stealing, he didn't want to fight you. Straight up. So then you get mad that he don't want to fight you. That means that he ain't standing up for himself. So then you put your hands on him the first time. Everyone breaks it up. And then he's still over there selling out a little bit. When you know it ain't in him to be a gangster or to ride a rock. Because he didn't. When he had the chance and opportunity to fight you the first time. He was, he was scared. But now he's just doing all this. You see? So it just shows how gangs and shit can go. You feel me? Like not every brother is your brother. I came across some real solid ones that represent that shit and that are true to their nations. Then I came across some that just became a gang member for protection, you know, or just became a gang member because, you know, they wanted to stand for something that already had a name. They didn't want to be alone or, you know, just because they had, they're lost in life. They have nowhere else to go, nothing to do. They're nothing. They were never stood for anything and ain't ever been respected on their own. So they decided to become something that already had a name and had respect behind it. You feel me? I'm glad that the dude woke up because my dog would have got an ad charge. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because when you get in them fights and shit, you don't even be knowing how severe it is. You don't be knowing the damage you're truly doing to that person. So someone can literally just slip and fall, break their neck and not wake up, which we've had that happen too in prison before. Had people fighting in the cell and fall and hit their head on the little desk that's sticking out of the wall that you write on. So bang, hit that, crack that shit, don't wake up, add charge, straight to the county jail. Now you got a body. You see? But it's crazy because my dog, once he got transferred, I ended up getting transferred after that also. But he, he got transferred first. We talked to each other from cell phone to cell phone from where I was at to the, to the camp he landed at. And he was telling me that when he got there, you know, his brothers tried to not fuck with him. They tried to like act like he wasn't one of them and shit like that. And then he went to the head, the Inca, and he decided to tell him like, man, look, check this shit out. He broke it down, told him what it was. Ba -ba -ba. They put him on observation for a little while, you know, to look more back on the story because the dude who he put in the coma got transferred first. So he was able to spread word and he told nothing but false accusations. So then it came out that it was false, everything he said. So then he ended up being plated, that guy. Wherever he went, they ate him. 
They wet him up. They got him from around there. They took his crown from him and all this different shit because he stole. Not only did he, they don't allow stealing, but he stole from one of his own kind. You feel me? And then he got transferred to another camp and he was like a plate everywhere he went behind that shit. But he did try to save face on his own situation and lie by spreading the word first saying this is what happened. When all my dog did was keep it quiet. My dog wasn't trying to tell everybody everything that happened. You know, he wasn't one of them type of people. He was just, I did what I needed to do. Fuck him. I'll do it again if I have to. That's, you know what I'm saying? And after me and him being in the box so long, you know, we got even more close. So I started, you know, finding out and hearing everything as far as the goods, the bads, the uglies, and the flaws in the organization. Things that, you know, people who don't gangbang ain't even supposed to know. But I started, you know, being told all these different things to where I started learning more. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. I started seeing shit for what it really was. And a lot of times you, you, you can't, you know, be involved in shit that gang has got going on in prison if you're not affiliated. You feel me? You're not supposed to know nation affairs and stuff like that. And just by you knowing certain things or them thinking you know certain things can put you in the line of fire and make you a target. Due to me being stuck in confinement, there was no one around me to where I could have been harmed like that. You feel me? Other than my bunkie, you know, and then him being next to me. And me knowing all this different shit that was going on and stuff, you know, it made it to where I'm like learning a lot of things, but I'm out of harm's way because I was back in there in the box, feel me, until I ended up getting transferred for the phone and knife. Now, if I was on the pound, who knows, it could have low-key put a hit on me, got me up off the pound just because I knew something I shouldn't have known. That's why it's better for you to mind your business, like I say, only worry about yourself, you know, you ain't got to be in other people's business. You don't even really want to know what's going on because just by them thinking you know what's going on can make you a target and you can become dear me. You feel me? But that right there by me being back there so long with him and me learning all this different shit about his organization because he was already in the organization. So he would tell me certain things because he wasn't getting along with none of his brothers. He couldn't trust none of his brothers. Even though they'd come back there and holler at him every once in a while, you know, they'd come onto my door and say, oh, what's up? Like, what's happening? You know, I was cool with them as well, but they didn't know I knew as much as I knew. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because they literally were going to try to eat my dog. You know, they were going to try to, you know, take his crown from him because of what he did against all their saying. But they still came back there and seen him all the time and was talking to him all nicely and shit from behind the door and everything. But he already knew they were going to try to eat him. You see, that's how it goes. So it's like in the long run, you're, you're siding with the thief. You're siding with the one that's scared to fight rather than the one who is the plug, the one who has it all, and the one who is going to fight, the one that did stand up for herself, the one that got his shit stolen from him. But what it was is there was a lot of envy between the whole organization and all because they all wanted his spot. They all wanted to be the plug. You feel me? So since they wanted to be the plug, they decided to get him out the way. So, you know, you got to get rid of one plug in order for the next one to be a plug. And that's how it was. You feel me? And this is before I even landed and seen what type of, like, how serious gangs really are. Because I was at Calhoun. This is, you feel me? I got, I got, I landed at Charlotte. You feel me? After this. When I landed at Charlotte CI and I started seeing all the different stuff with the gangs, I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in the water with these sharks. This is real gangland. You feel me? Because they call G-Dorm at Calhoun gangland. You feel me? Oh, welcome to gangland. It's G-Dorm, G-Block. You feel me? Which, yeah, it was a bunch of gang members. There was gangs there, a lot of them. But once I got to Charlotte, I was like, oh, boy, this is like the headquarters or something. This shit goes down over here. You feel me? But it's crazy, though, man, because you always see gang-on-gang gang stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, I respect all gangs. It don't matter what organization it is. You feel me? That's down this way. It don't matter if it's Bloods, Crips, the 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 Zoes, the the Kings. You know, no matter what it is, the GDs, the Cutthroats, all that. I respect them all because I got people in each organization. You feel me? And there's there's definitely some real ones in all organizations, no matter which organization it is. You feel me? But you always see gang on gang violence. And for this one here, my dog was a Latin king. He stomped his own brother and put him in a coma. If you've ever been locked up and you've seen somebody do something to their own brother, drop it in the comment section. Because I know it goes down around the world. You feel me? It ain't just down here in Florida. But to me, it was crazy, you know, because I was literally there. 
So by me seeing it all and seeing how it played out and then see how they tried to turn it on my dog like he was wrong. And then the other dude finally woke up and twisted the story around telling something different. It was just completely like, it was fuckery. That's what it is. Straight fuckery. It was just bullshit. Unnecessary bullshit. It was like they were trying to plate such a good person. You know, they were trying to harm my dog who was such a good person that in heart and he wrought with his gang and he stood for that shit and he was a real one. So it just opened my eyes to show me that no matter how real you are to an organization, all it takes is someone to lie on you. All it takes is someone to twirl it up, write a false statement, flip it around on you. And no matter how cool you are and how legit and committed you are, they could put a bad image and a bad story out about you. And it'd be false. They like this dude's story over your story. Next thing you know, if there's 25 of them on the compound, 15 of them may be, may be against you. The other people ain't against you. But when them 15 ride and they decide to come eat you and they decide to come wet you up and get you off that pound, even though you're one of their own, the other ones ain't going to do nothing about it. The other ones ain't going to rock for you. The other ones are going to bow down and they're just going to not be the ones that do it. But they're still not going to tell you they're coming. You see what I'm saying? And my dog almost got put in a serious situation all because he stood up for himself when someone stole his shit. But anyways, man, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all watching. I know yesterday I dropped the inmate dictionary. You feel me? I usually don't drop videos back to back every day, but I didn't want to just drop that one and wait another day or two. So I say, you know what? I'm going to drop another one today too for y'all. You feel me? That's just how I felt like doing it. But I appreciate y'all watching, man. Y'all already know that. I say it every single time. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't on the way in. Hit it on your way out. And remember, keep them squares, rats, snakes, chomos, pedos, heavy gunners, all them out your circle. And no matter what, whatever you have to do, just make sure you do what's best for you. I appreciate y'all watching this. Till next time, this is Frog.